Welcome everyone, it is Andrew from IGB and we're going to take a look at some of the best calendar apps for iPad. Starting off with the best one on the list, Fantastical. There is a whole lot to love in this app. Uh, they have great navigation with a whole bunch of little gestures and swipes that you can use to pull down to go from day view to week view all the way into month view. You can swipe all the way back up to get back to your kind of dashboard type view. Adding stuff is super easy and you can even use it doing dictation. It has intelligent kind of natural language processing to take what you say or type and figure out how to actually make that into a calendar appointment or a task uh, for that matter. The app overall just looks really, really nice. This is clearly a very well polished app as all the other ones are. It's available you know, for your iPhone, Apple Watch, and Mac as well. So it's pretty much the full ecosystem type app. I actually really, really love working in it. It does have a bit of a dark UI, but actually that can be changed inside of settings. Tapping the check mark in the top left hand corner opened up the reminders list and this does integrate with Apple's stock reminders app so you can completely replace the calendar and reminders app with Fantastical. Obviously just type something in, hit enter, it'll put it on the list. You can even give it a time or date and it'll uh, put that reminder in for that time as well. Settings has very many things you can customize here. Uh, a few different things for the calendars, like which calendars do you want to actually use. I like that it pulls them in natively from your stock calendar app that you already have set up. You can also make changes to the widget. You can highlight certain weeks and moments. Um, you can do the lighter UI. So if you want a light theme instead of the dark theme, definitely doable here in Fantastical. A bunch of other specific things you can set up to really get detailed and make Fantastical the best calendar app for you. I really even like the widgets in this app. You can actually change which widgets you display inside of the app itself, but it just looks really smooth, really thought out, really well put together. Fantastic how is available in the App Store for $9.99. Next up, we have Calendar 5 from Riedel. It definitely comes across less assuming. It's a lot more white space and very much lighter UI overall than Fantastic how is, though I don't really like it as much. It still is a great looking app. You have all the different views on top from day, week, month, and year, as well as this nice scroll bar along the bottom to jump between months. On that bottom left hand corner is the settings option where you can connect to your Google Calendar, or if you want to use your local calendars, you can choose which calendars you have displayed, different view options, different time zones, a lot of basic calendar things that you may want to go and set up, like what day of the week stuff start on, and what badge icon you want to display. Riedel makes a great list of productivity apps, so if you already use some of them in their other in your other workflows, you may want to just add this to the list because it can be bundled together. A few things I really like, I love how you can actually drag and drop the different calendar appointments on your calendar itself. The new event creation view looks really nice and simple and they still have that natural language processing similar to Fantastical does. I also like this little line on the bottom where you can choose like the day, day hours and night hours or when you're know, starting and stopping. Of course they also have a widget too so if you'd like to set those up which I find really useful on the iPad um, compared to even on my iPhone there is one available it's a little bit darker looks a little not quite as smooth as the I, as the fantastic how one but i does like it how it tells me how many minutes until my next event so another nice little feature if you'd like to add this to your list of apps you can pick it up for just under fantastic how's price at 8.99 moving on we have planner pro planner pro is another great calendars app and for those fans of skeuomorphism it looks like a traditional old planner along the bottom are several tabs that you can use to go through all the different months and then on the top is the day, month, task, and note view. I really like this traditional planner view here with the list on the right, notes on the left, and the day and that month in the top left corner. Month view is also a really nice way to see a high level of everything you got going on. Task and notes are really cool though. Task does not actually integrate with the stock task or reminders application, which is a little bit of a bummer. But notes on the other hand is really cool because it actually, if you put a date on a note, it'll put it to that day in your calendar. So you'll see it on the left and then your calendar stuff on the right. Settings works well enough. Really the main reason this is on the list so high is because it has a fantastic free version of the app. Some things are in the pro version, such as being ad free, but for really what it can do in the free version is absolutely top notch. So if you're looking for a great calendar app without really having to pay for much, this is definitely one to check out. Pro version will also get you week views and project folders to house subtasks. It's also available on iPhone as well as Apple Watch. And just like the other top ones on the list, it does feature a little widget showing your upcoming appointments for the day. It's also not too expensive, costing $4.99 a year. After Planner Pro, we have a big one on the list, and that's going to be Google Calendar. 
obviously this is definitely designed by Google you can tell right away with opening it, it has a really really gorgeous little background artwork here that changes with the season the biggest problem I would have with Google Calendar is it only works with Google Calendar so you can't integrate this into your iOS stuff so you can't add your iCloud stuff you can't add your reminders or notes anything else that you would use with other email clients but it's just a great email client. It looks so nice, it's so smooth, it works so well. It'll automatically pull stuff from your email into the calendar. You have goals as well as reminders that you can track in here alongside of your calendar appointments. Even your calendar creation screen just looks really nice. So overall, just a fantastic calendar. Just a bummer it does not work with more native stock applications on your iPad. Now we have Pocket Life, and this is definitely a little bit rough around the edges. It looks a little mm, compared to a lot of the other ones, but it's overall just a great calendar app, and it's very, very popular. You have all the different views across the bottom, as well as that task or search view, as well as day, month, and year. You can even actually go through, and there's seven different monthly different layouts. So there's a bunch of different layouts that you can tinker with, tons of colors, so you can find something that doesn't look as bad as maybe it does right out of the box. There's some other really cool features. The Apple Watch app is actually really, really nice. And it has things like templates, which I find really cool. So you can set one up for maybe maybe PTO. You have a PTO day that you just want to be able to do. So you create that as a template. And then every time you need it, you can just choose from that template to put it in. So templates are really nice. Reminders are baked in. And it does pull in all your calendars straight from the calendar app, which I always appreciate because you don't have to do any additional setup. You literally just allow access to calendars and all your information just flows in. Aside from the calendars, it also has that reminders integration and has other random features like even an alarm clock baked into the app. So a lot of really nice stuff in here for a pretty affordable price. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the big benefits is the amount of customization options that you do have to work with here. Tapping on that gear in that top left hand corner opens up the menu where you can see stuff like choosing stuff for your reminders, changing the color options, sound options, the animations, lots of different stuff. They don't always look great. This green is a, a bit hard on the eyes, uh, but lots of things you can come in here. You can see how much you can tinker. You can choose that main theme, but you can actually go in and choose many of the different color sets themselves. And of course it does have a widget, which is actually a really nice widget. So that is Pocket Life available for free, but you can upgrade for only I think $4.99. Now we have the week calendar which is in our honorable mentions list. It's definitely strong enough to be a contender here. Great breakdown on the left hand side. Just a really nicely designed app. It looks really nice and smooth. Calendar appointments can be dragged and dropped across the app and you can even change the different colors for appointments to make it really easy to see what's going on in your day. Along the top corner, there's a few other cool options. First, there's that go to, which is really easy to jump to a specific day instead of searching around for it. You have these export options where you can print everything. So you actually just take what you have looking at right now on your screen, so what your day view looks like, and print it. So that's really neat, as well as exporting those options to something like a CSV or an Excel file. So if you wanted to share everything in your calendar for the next weekday, month, whatever it may be, really easy to get that into a document. And adding events, it's really nice, it looks really nice and smooth, and another cool feature, you can actually add attachments to your calendar, your appointments here. So that's a really nice feature, I really like being able to add something like a you know, picture or something to um, my actual calendar appointment. Overall, Wii Calendar is a really nice calendar app. I love the design and the simplicity of it, and it also comes in at a cheaper price point. You get everything inside of the app, as well as a really nice uh, notification center widget, all for only $3.99, which is comparatively lower than pretty much everything else we've seen on the list so far. So for all of that and more, Wii Calendar makes it into our honorable mentions list. Next up in our honorable mentions list is iCalendar iCalendar gets frequent updates adding new features. Lately, they've just added a task manager that syncs with the Reminders app, but that will cost you an additional in-app purchase, only 99 cents though. On the bottom, you can jump between the day, week, month, and year view, which are all very nicely laid out. They do have some other neat options like exporting, so just like we saw in the week calendar, you can export, but in iCal, you can actually export them as a PDF which is definitely something that I appreciate instead of um, an Excel or a CSV style, something that's a little harder to open, you can export them as a PDF. So really handy uh, if you do like to get stuff out of your calendar app. They also have a really nice search function and it works really, really fast. It actually starts kind of filtering out a list of possible options as you're typing. So just really, uh, really, really fast as you're typing here, it's showing all the possible options when I'm typing in faith. So really nice search functionality as well here. 
Similar to what we've seen in other calendar apps, you still can actually create templates here. So you could create a template for a specific type of event. So maybe a PTO day or a sick day. I, those are my only examples I can think of right now. Uh, but you can create them in here and then every time you have that type of appointment come up, you can simply choose it and add it right to the list. You can even choose a specific color for that template. So really quick and easy to add templates to your calendar. It does have natural language processing. You can see this is for the 11th right now, but I say dinner with Faith tomorrow and it immediately bumps it up to the next day. So it does have that processing in there to kind of help you create those events quickly and easily. Amongst the other nice features in the app, there's just a lot of good interaction. It has an option to control what is shown on the badge icon, which is a much appreciated little micro change that you can make there. And even the widget view is also fairly nice. I really like being able to have that widget view with a calendar. For me, that's that's oddly important because I like to be able to see what's going on quickly and easily. Um, and it does work, it does fit in right and easily there. Tapping the plus button will take you right into the calendar app to create a new appointment. Next up we have AnyDo, which is kind of unfortunate because I absolutely love AnyDo. It's a fantastically designed app. It is super smooth, laid out excellently. Unfortunately, the iPhone version blows the iPad version away. Notably, there's no calendar in the iPad version yet. It has all your reminders, it has your notes, your tasks, it has everything in here. And the calendar is on the iPhone version and it works great. I love these special kind of moments here where it shows you what's going on and you can kind of assign it, yeah, I'm gonna do this later, I'm gonna do it tomorrow, how many days, whatever it may be. It's a great app, but unfortunately we can't really recommend it yet until it gets updated with that new calendar. Lastly on our list, we have Outlook, which everyone knows kind of bought Sunrise, a fantastic calendar a long time ago. And they've integrated most of those features here into Outlook. It's a little bit minimalistic as far as calendar applications go, which is why it's in our honorable mentions. But on the plus side, it also bakes in things like your contacts and your files and your email. So all those other things into one really simple, easy app. So if you're looking for kind of an all-in-one solution, Outlook is probably the one you should check out. Whichever calendar app you prefer, you can find the link below in the description. Let us know in the comments which one's your favorite or if we left one out. Otherwise, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and until next time, this is Andrew for IDB.